Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more links. And remember, you are all amazing for all the support you've given me. So thank you so much. Now, without making any talking too much, I want to just explain one thing. We had a little error here in the SRAND. So I want you to make it look exactly like this. What you probably have is you have the static cast around the zero in here. You want to have it around the time because the SRAND takes an unsigned and the time takes a time T variable. Now that can be a zero, but this needs to be an unsigned. It can be a time T. That's why you need to do that. So that's my bad. I made a, I made a little error there. Anyway, I have a completely new computer now, so I had to change the project settings here. I don't know if you have done that, but I changed mine to 10.0 and then 2019 here. So if in case you get any errors, you might want to change that back to whatever you have. Uh, but it shouldn't make a big difference if you have Visual Studio 2019. You should be able to run it. Uh, anyway, let's get started. So in the last video, what the progress we have is basically we create a window with a title in it, nothing special. We have a player class here, nothing special. We want to just make sure that we can move our player around. That's what I want to do. So we have a sprite in a texture sheet. And if we go into our player.cpp, we'll see that we have a function in it sprite and in it texture, but we haven't done anything with it really. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a little sprite and a little texture and we're going to make sure we can print something out on screen. So what I've done is I've put a player sheet from one of my other projects into my textures folder in my project. So what you want to do is you will have a textures folder here. Just paste your player sheet in there. It's basically just an animation sheet for a 2D from Metroid, from Super Metroid that I've created. So I just picked out a few things, changed the color a little bit and and the uh what do you call it contrast so it looks a little different but that's pretty much it we will be animating this and making sure we can use this in our project it's going to be a little longer project this one so expect at least 20 videos but we'll go and start off by loading this texture so we already have a texture sheet variable all we're going to do is load from file okay and we're going to remember this file name here and we're going to go to that folder again, wherever you put it, right here. Uh, go to the point where your, all you have to do is textures actually. So textures, player sheet. Okay, so textures, player sheet dot PNG. Good. And we of course make an if statement around this. If it fails, we're going to print out std c out error let's say the class so error player could not load the player sheet very simple and a new line new line right there okay good so once we have that ready and done what you want to do next is of course not have a capital there and there we go. The next thing is to load this texture into the sprite itself. And to do that, we need to do this sprite dot set texture dot, no, sorry, uh, this texture sheet. And we're gonna put the whole texture sheet into the sprite. So it's gonna look very weird, but we're gonna fix that, I promise. Once this is done, you have init texture before init sprite. Remember that. And remember to call these functions in the constructor as well. And then we have the render where we draw the sprite. You don't have to set the texture again. So once this is done, we run this. You probably won't see anything right now, but at least it runs. We didn't get any error message here that it couldn't load. So it could load the texture sheet. Most probably if we did create a player here, player update, there we go. But we're not rendering the player. So I'm going to create a function similar to this in, but for render. And to do that, what I want to open is my game.h again. Make a void update render or render, sorry, render player would be more, make more sense. And just define that for us here. This window 
dot draw is the function we're going to use and we're just going to draw this player uh or we're going to do this actually this player render this window let's go to the actual file here to the game.cpp where we created it render player this is how it's supposed to look so you're calling the players render function and sending in window to it because remember we already have that render function in player so it takes the target render target which is our window and it draws the sprite onto it all right and this makes it a little easier you can use sf drawable and and all that stuff as well i usually don't use that i don't like to use that because this is a little easier for me and makes it a little more clear for me but you can use it if you've learned that you can learn that technique in on the sfml homepage actually and i can show it to you as well later but let's just keep going here this render player very simple and once we do that now we should actually be able to see the entire entire sprite sheet being rendered and this isn't what we want of course but this is what's happening right now so we're gonna keep this this is fine for now i want to make sure that we can actually move the player back and forth and this is very important i'm going to make a very simple movement function in the update to do that usually what i do is i create a movement outside player but just try this out let's create a movement inside the player function here a player class i'm going to make a void update movement like that and then run this good and in this update movement in the player cpp we're going to do all the movement stuff and how do we do how do we move the sprite well you want to make an if statement sf keyboard just like we did before with the closing of the screen keyboard is key pressed sf key keyboard key a of course a would be the left movement which is right left there we go and moving left so this sprite dot move and sprite has a move function which is very convenient right and to the left so how much do we want to move to the left well we'll say minus five to the left now minus is to the left because remember the left top corner is zero right and anything to the right of that is positive so to move in the negative direction you have to move left we're going to make an else if here copy the entire thing and paste it in here and write a d in there so this would be our right movement like that this sprite dot move five dot f a positive five and zero point f this will allow the sprite to move to the right now i can copy paste the entire thing and we're going to make some small changes here this is going to be top and this is going to be down all right but we need to change the key to w and s make sure that is changed to w and s for down and this needs to be changed to 0.f 0.f but here we're going to write the 5 on the y coordinate minus 5 because this represents the y coordinate right so we're moving up and down here we're moving left and right once this is done you want to remember to call this this update movement like that in the player update function and go to game make sure that in the update function of your game you're calling the update player function and we'll run this again so it's moving really fast i don't want to do that let's let's change this actually to one 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 and that was real fast so i'm not going to do that okay so you can see it's moving pretty fast still but <laughs> that's because we have an unlimited frame rate Another thing we're going to do then, just because of that, so we don't fry our graphics cards, is to go to our init window function where we create it. And we're going to set this, we're going to set a frame rate limit. So this window dot set frame rate limit to 144. You set it to 144 as well. I recommend that because if we have the same frame rate, our game will move at the same pace. So all our stuff 
will we'll do, all the uh, values will move, the player width will be the same. If you have a higher frame rate than me, your game will move faster. If you have a lower one than me, your game will move slower. And this is because we haven't implemented a delta time yet, which helps us negate that, makes our game frame rate independent instead of dependent as it is right now. But we'll get into that, don't worry. This is just a start. So now if I set the frame rate limit, you'll see that one is a lot slower, right? And we're moving the whole sprite here, the whole entire sprite we're moving. So that's good, right? That's good to know. Nice. Now we have a sprite rendering with a texture on it, although it doesn't look amazing. Uh, what we can do before we finalize this is to go to your player.h file and we have our sprite and we're going to make a something called a float rect here. Um, and let's see, uh, texture, let's see, actually, here we go. Let's go to sprite this sprite dot set texture rect. And just to check what it is, a texture rect is an int rect. Sorry, so it's not a float rect, it's an int rect. And what that is, is it will tell you how much of this texture you want to render. You don't have to render the entire thing, we'll render a small bit of it. So let's try that before we do anything. I'll end rect. And it's basically what it is, the integer rectangle. So it will take four values. It will start at zero, zero of this texture and it will do 64, 64 width and height. So to show you what that means on the texture itself, basically we have a texture, it will start at zero, zero and take the width I give it and the height I give it and just cut that out of this texture. So hopefully this will be some kind of a, a thing here. Okay, so it wasn't really what I needed but something, it actually cut off what I needed, right? So there we go. This is probably 32, 32 or something. So we'll figure that out as we go. But in our player.h, like I'm saying, let's make an int rect, sf int, int rect current frame. And this will be set to whatever I'm saying right now. So first of all, we'll do this current frame equals sf int rect and we'll give it all the values it has here like this and then we'll set our texture rect to this current frame and this will help us later in our animation but this is just a little test that we're doing here right now just so we can cut out enough of this texture so that wasn't really what I wanted of course it was it should be probably 3264 probably something like that let's try one more time if it's not correct okay almost correct almost correct so I almost have our player rendering here I'll check out the exact values and then I'll get back to you in the next one but for now this should help you out keep experimenting with this change the values here uh, add some more another texture if you want another texture sheet all that stuff but for now, that is good. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And in the next one, we'll make some animation happen probably as a movement and keep working on the game. All right. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.